Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at something interesting called ground effect. Now many of you probably heard the term ground effect and it basically describes uh, when your aircraft gets within about a wing length or about half a wing length of the ground that it sees a substantial decrease in the amount of drag that the aircraft experiences. Now the interesting thing with uh, ground effect of course is the drag goes down but the lift does not. So you run into a situation uh, when you hit that ground effect, especially if you have a significant amount of speed, that it almost acts a little bit like a little cushion that kind of hovers you over the ground a little bit. Now, the interesting thing, too, is depending on the configuration of the aircraft, you can have a different effect with ground effect. And we'd like to show you what that's going to look like today. So I'm sitting here in the uh, Piper. This is a PA-28. This is the Just Flight one. Uh, I've got a lot of experience flying this plane in the real world now. It's, um, it's been a lot of fun. There's a lot of things I really like about it, like the fact I can look out the window and actually see where I'm turning. <laughs> it's just a little things that you watch out for. But there are a couple of little quirks in it that I wish were a little bit better. And one of the quirks being, of course, is the fact that we've got this really gorgeous wing below which means if we get close to the ground we get ground effect like you would not believe so here in microsoft flight simulator uh, we get that effect as well and we're basically going to sit here and experiment just a teeny tiny bit to show you what it looks like and you know kind of how you can make it work to your advantage so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna go ahead and give ourselves full power we're at uh, jfk by the way this is a uh, one tree right in case you're curious and we're just going to go ahead and take off and uh, then we're going to do a little a kind of rejected little takeoff here and now uh, we're going to go ahead and cause things to uh, not go well up to my usual i do about 60 knots for this airplane that's a little high because uh, you tend to zip out we're going to go ahead and pop ourselves up and here's what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back and i'm just going to kind of sit here for a second i get myself to about my approach speed of about 70 knots and we're just going to kind of sink down to the ground i'm just going to pull back pretty hard oh and we're down now, as you probably observed uh, when I was sinking, I was sinking fast. I was almost 700 feet per minute. But when I started getting very close to the ground, even though I didn't change the nose angle, you'll see that all of a sudden the plane pretended like it kept flying. So let's do the exact same thing. But this time, rather than trying to keep the plane flat, I'm going to fly all the way back down to the ground and then sit close to the ground to see if you can see the difference. We're going to get up to 40, just like we did before. This is what I love about these long runways is you can do stuff like this. Get up to 55, uh, there's 60 knots. I'm gonna go ahead and climb up here, start going up, start going up, start going up, and I'm gonna pull the throttle back. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the nose of the plane down. We're gonna get within a couple feet of the ground. And we're just gonna sit in ground effect. Notice that huge balloon there. Now notice, because I have so much more speed, I'm just basically chilling here on the ground. Go ahead and settle the back two tires, and now we're down. Notice because I was able to get the aircraft closer to the ground sooner that it has just so much more energy available, which of course, unfortunately, as you probably noticed, made me take up a significantly longer amount of runway. And again, you could see that the moment that it started getting close to the ground, how the plane just like went straight. I didn't even change the angle of the nose at that. Now, this gets a little different when we introduce a high wing. Now, we saw how dramatic the impact of ground effect was on a low wing. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it in a high-winged airplane. Now, because we are high wing, the distance between here and the ground will always be at least this, whereas when we had the low wing, it was significantly closer, meaning the ground effect effect, if you want to think about it another way, is much stronger. So let's go ahead and do the same experiment and see if that's actually true. So I'm going to go ahead and give ourselves full throttle. We'll go ahead and use the same basic technique we did last time. Give everybody a little wiggle. Make sure my flaps are away. We don't need those for this demonstration. So we'll do the exact same thing and see what happens this time. So we're going to get rolling. Again, we have about the same weight class, basically the same engine. Actually, we have a slightly smaller, or larger engine than we did on the other airplane, which means it's going to be a little bit trickier. So we're going to go up to 55 knots. There's five, one, two, three, four, five. Lift that nose up. This plane comes up nice and smoothly. We're going to get a little bit of altitude. We'll go ahead and pull the throttle back. Oh, rejected takeoff. So now we're going to go ahead and do what we did before. We'll keep it nice and flat. All right, I'm going to hold the nose up. Oh, my gosh. We're getting a few feet within the ground. Ooh, and this thing just... <laughs> it was done. So go ahead and hold the brakes there. We did a pretty nice job. I think it's interesting that my digital display shows the burn marks of the ground as well. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and try that again. So I noticed there was no cushion. As soon as I started getting close to the ground, it just... It went on for a few hundred feet, and that was basically it. So let's go ahead and try this again, but we use the other technique where we're going to try to hug the ground or suck as much energy out of the plane as possible. So we're going to get up to our regular speed here. There's 40. There's 5 zero, 55. Ready to go. A little bit of right foot there. Keep us nice and coordinated. Get a little bit of altitude underneath us. And rejected takeoff. Let's go ahead and try it out this time. We're going to go ahead and sink down to the ground nice and aggressively. Hit that ground effect. Hold that nose up. 
Now notice we're getting a little bit of that cushion, but we didn't get nearly as much as we did with that lower wing on this aircraft, meaning our whole total distance we needed to travel to get to this point was significantly reduced. So as you can see, the ground effect is actually fairly well modeled between the two different style wings. Uh, again, the Piper with that much lower wing was much closer to the ground and much more uh, pronounced. This aircraft, even though it has basically the same stats and just slightly different arrangement, is much less affected. Now, if you really want to see dramatic ground effect, imagine if you hear 747 coming in for a landing. Uh, because our wings are so long, our effect kicks in 50 or 60 feet off the ground, which is why when airliners flare to lift up the nose to slow down, they only need to pull up about two or three degrees to go ahead and bring themselves to the ground safely. Hopefully this video is interesting. Like I said, it's uh, definitely worth experimenting a little bit with these things. People who do a lot of grass flying, I know all about this, because it's basically your MO in order to get safely into the air. Enjoy.